Imagine the following two scenarios. You're having a burger and a cook for lunch because you're too busy to prepare food. In the afternoon, you feel sluggish and unmotivated, so you won't cook for dinner either and you will have a pizza instead. You sleep poorly and the next day your mood is terrible and even anxiety is creeping up that something might be wrong with you. Now in the second scenario, you have a big salad with salmon for lunch and cause you're not having a sugar crush, you're productive in the afternoon and motivated enough to cook in the evening. You sleep well and the next day you feel energized. We all have those days where we indulge in the convenience of the modern world. But if you are anything like me, it often fires back. It took me a while to understand it, but I often felt really off on Sundays after having a fun weekend with friends. I seem to be especially sensible to how food affects my mood, but it certainly does. Good thing is that I figured it out and also figured out ways to overcome it. Before we start, this video is not meant to be a medical advice on how to treat depression, as it is obviously a complex disease that deserves proper treatment. But what I hope to accomplish with this video is to give you an alternative method in improving your mood, a method that subjectively works for me. Okay, even though the treatment of depression is challenging, Scientists have figured out by accident how to induce depression in almost 50% of people. Injections with interferon alpha, an inflammatory cytokine, is the standard treatment for hepatitis C virus, but causes depression in more than 40% of patients. Interferon alpha is an inflammatory protein that increases inflammation in the body, which affects the brain and can lead to depression. Now, what does this have to do with food? Well, Food can either increase or decrease inflammation in the body, depending on your food choices and how you react to certain foods. For instance, a study found that eating a meal from McDonald's increases oxidative stress and inflammation. However, it seems that adding something healthy to it can offset the effect of unhealthy food. A study gave volunteers either a burger or a burger plus an avocado and found that the avocado reduced inflammatory levels in the blood, despite the fact that the avocado added more calories to the meal. Food as a treatment is not a new concept. Hippocrates already figured this out more than 2000 years ago when he said, let food be thy medicine. He would probably be proud to see the next study that nicely illustrates this. People with hepatitis C were injected with interferon alpha, as before, but half of the people received the omega-3 fatty acid, EPA, and the other half received the placebo. At the end of the study, the incidences of depression were three times lower in the omega-3 group. Omega-3 fatty acid supplementation has also been shown to be effective in childhood depression. And another study showed that omega-3 could improve mood and reduce anxiety in healthy people and medical students. Omega-3 is the most studied food component when it comes to depression, but other foods have also been shown to be effective. In one study, eating berries could improve the mood in healthy children and young adults. This effect might also come from the anti-inflammatory effects of berries. As an example, a study found that when overweight people consumed a high carb and high fat meal, it increased their inflammation levels. But this was attenuated when a strawberry smoothie was consumed right after the meal, which was not the case for the placebo drink. Hippocrates also showed incredible foresight when he said that all disease begins in the gut. We are only starting to understand the power of the microbiome. But recent research made it pretty clear that in some cases, depression starts in the gut. Our gut microbes can produce neuroactive substances like serotonin, GABA, norepinephrine or dopamine. Our microbiome also communicates with our immune system and can either calm it down or stimulate inflammation that eventually wreak havoc in the brain. An increase in intestinal permeability, aka leaky gut, can cause bacterial endotoxins to enter the body, where they are recognized by our immune system and cause inflammation. One of the most inflammatory agents is lipopolysaccharide, or short LPS, which is found on the outer cell wall of gram-negative bacteria. And when recognized by the immune system, it causes a huge inflammatory response. If you type into PubMed, LPS and depression, you get more than 1000 results 
illustrating the power of LPS as a trigger for depression. And a study recently published in the journal GUT found that increased intestinal permeability correlates with high blood LPS levels and that people with depression have significantly higher levels of LPS in their blood. Gut health is a complex topic, but a rule of thumb is to avoid highly processed foods, as many food additives cause inflammation in the gut by altering the microbiome. Certain nutrients have also been shown to improve gut health and reduce inflammation. A study published in 2014 shows that vitamin D supplementation improves inflammation and stabilizes intestinal permeability in patients with Crohn's disease. Vitamin D deficiency is generally associated with low mood, and clinical trials show that vitamin D supplementation improves the mood in healthy subjects as well as in subjects that already suffer from symptoms of depression. Foods high in vitamin D are all kinds of fatty fish and eggs from free-living chicken. Vitamin D is just one example. Certain nutrient deficiencies have also been shown to be associated with depression. A recent study identified 12 antidepressant nutrients and used the scoring system to find foods with a high density of these antidepressant nutrients. The highest scoring foods were oysters, mussels, various seafoods and organ meats for the animal foods, and leafy greens, lettuce, peppers and cruciferous vegetables for the plant foods. So how do I use all this knowledge? Let's assume I'm planning on going out tonight to have some tasty but otherwise unhealthy food and maybe even some drinks on the side. Well, I make sure to load up on some good anti-inflammatory foods during the day and have my meals planned for the next day. Planning the meals for the next day has become really helpful for me. I usually don't crave sugar or junk food except for the few times where I just had it and having healthy food ready makes it easy to not give in to the cravings. Alright, I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to learn more about anti-inflammatory foods, click on this video. If you are interested in the connection between inflammation and depression or the gut and depression, click on one of these two videos. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.